Thank you, Pat. <clears throat> well, welcome everyone. And we have seats in the front for those who don't want to stand for my presentation. I won't stand for your presentation. Okay, uh, every year my talk gets shorter. Hey, John. <laughs> um, and this year we'll continue that trend. It's a slow fade. Um, but I would like to go through some of the things that the integration facility has done over the last year. And uh, systems, uh, th the facility has uh, eight functions. I think you know them all, but I want to tell you sort of the latest within these uh, activities. Oh, it's going to rain. It's rained every single day. It has for the whole month. Eight inches of rain. Anyways, back on systems. So uh, the capacity building community networking, that's one of our prime uh, functions. And I'm happy to announce that we have 150 uh, new members of CSDMS that have joined this last year. We have uh, a new uh, focused research group, the Ecosystem Dynamics Group. It's co-sponsored by the International Society for Ecological Modeling. So this is one that uh, you may have remembered. Uh, we've been trying to get off the ground, and I think uh, Brian Fath is here, the new chair, and he, can, uh, he will be talking. And if you're interested in being part of this uh, focus research group, you may, may want to talk with him and sit in on those meetings. We have 15 uh, new instructional clinics that we've um, put together, and you're going to see three of them at this workshop. Um, Del Terrace has agreed to sort of be the spokesperson for the Euro CSDMS effort. It's, um, they're going to be interacting with the funders in Europe and try to see if they can get that activity better funded and off the ground in Europe. And we have a number of new chairs or co-chairs. We have Chris Sherwood, who will be speaking in a second, on the interagency working group. Uh, that's a reshift of what we've already had uh, with a, a Fed running that effort now. Uh, Rally Hood is going to be the new chair of the Chesapeake Focus Research Group. Leo Flores is the co-chair of the Critical Zone Focus Research Group. Mark Rosenvall uh, is uh, the new co-chair of the Human Dimension, or what used to be known as the Anthropocene Focus Research Group. And as I said, Brian Foth. Okay, so here's a little of our reach in terms of the capacity networking, and you can see some of the numbers. Um, some of the groups have grown very quickly. Remember, some of them have only in, been in existence for a year, so their growth has been rather spectacular, including Geodynamics, who only uh, two years ago they didn't exist, and so now they have over 80 members. Uh, in terms of open source repository, uh, what's to be said on this is that we have 13 new terrestrial models and tools that have come into the system over the last year. Five new coastal models, seven new marine models, five new hydrological models and tools. Um, so 240 uh, models and tools um, in total. And um, downloads about 15,000 through our site and about another 15,000 through redirect. So we're getting these models out there. If you're writing a model and you want this model to have some meeting, uh, to really have penetration, then um, providing it to us and letting us release it uh, with all you getting all the uh, acknowledgement is the way to go. And we have download, um, migrated to uh, GitHub's. And so you will see our repository now showing up there with these open source models. I, I, this is um, an image from Eckhart uh, Myberg uh, and his group, Santa Barbara. It's from a CSDMS um, um, <clears throat> supported effort. 
with the Bureau of Ocean Energy Management, and it's a turbidity current, and it, it looks so real, this numerical uh, result, that you'd think it was some, something generated in a laboratory experiment. Anyways, so on this topic of high-performance computers, one of the things that we did last year is that we had to migrate our system over to a new site, and that was successful. Usually when you have a migration, things break down, and ours survived. So uh, we, have, uh, <clears throat> we have room on our beach system, for those of you who want to take advantage of it, the systems community has been uh, consuming about 50% of the resources of that. And we have ever more of our membership uh, being migrated over to Janus, which is a much bigger system. And so we still have lots of use for that, although the bar in terms of having proved your bona fides has gone up a bit. So on the education and knowledge transfer topics, we continue to release new products, um, particularly uh, uh, student labs. So if you're interested in using our labs, we kind of test them out in a number of different environments before they're released. Feel free to do that. You know, there's a lot of materi educational material that goes with them. Our special issue on, on um, model uncertainty is um, under review now. The papers are in. and. Um, we are, we're doing the final um, editorial stuff on that special issue. And Science on the Sphere is probably our big effort. Last year we announced that we were planning on doing it. We've completed that now, um, although I think we're probably tidying up one effort in that. So we have a lot of thoughts on this, and you'll hear more about that in our educational uh, clinic. Um, but it's a very good way of getting your simulations uh, out there to the public because it gets to thousands of people who are running these spheres around the world in museums. So in terms of uh, reuse and protocols, um, our activities this last year, our big ones are simplifying the use of systems uh, web modeling tool. There's a clinic on that. We've uh, put together a BMI builder for getting our interfaces uh, to be more rapidly uh, wrapping models. And it's now in the testing phase. You can hear more about that in our clinic. And uh, we have a BMI importer for the systems framework that should speed things up also. So getting your products, uh, your models wrapped and available in the web modeling tool is getting easier and easier. And we've also put together a software stack installer, and we've tested it out on Yellowstone, NSF's new tier one uh, supercomputer. Um, it's, um, I don't know, a petaflops, two, one or two petaflops. I forget what it is up the road and our Janus system here. Uh, in the uh, semantics and uh, benchmarking, we now have 2,600 uh, system standard names um, with refined rules. Please uh, go online to see all about that. And um, as promised, we've been marching down the road in terms of this uh, taking the model uncertainty Dakota framework, uh, in introducing it within the system's uh, web modeling tool. So we have a prototype interface for running Dakota in WMT. We have a workshop on that. Python wrappers uh, for Dakota and uh, Dakota applications has been completed for, and we've just picked two models we knew about and were using, Delft 3D and Hydrotrend, just to test out what it would be like to run these models uh, in that domain. And uh, I, I mean, if you haven't uh, been following our uh, choice of Dakota. It's a very good uh, system uh, for uh, looking at uh, model uncertainty, parameter uh, opti optimization and design, uh, sensitivity analysis, etc. And in general, we should all be doing much more work on uncertainty analysis. So, 
our meeting this week, you will see that we have keynotes every day, plenary talks, uh, uh, some student award talks. Uh, we look forward to all of them. They're shown in this beige color. We will have a discussion on what do modelers want from the data community. This is going to be written up, the, paper, the notes from these discussions. It's only happening today. The notes from these discussions will be put together. Uh, maybe our community will have a chance to take these notes, maybe refine them before we send them off and publish them with uh, NSF. And this is part of the, uh, our contribution to the EarthCube that forum that NSF has put together on trying to get the data people uh, better working together and their standards and all of that better coordinated. And so I'm asking uh, five um, of our leaders to uh, take over this effort and uh, look at that discussion. And you know, you want to be uh, talking about what are best practices and of course what are the things that make our lives miserable and frustrating, uh, so both positive and negative, uh, you know, but we want to know how to better integrate the two communities. And we have a keynote speaker uh, uh, here representing GEOS, the Group on Earth Observation System of Systems, who will be telling us about this effort on the global scene of data and how models can play a role in that. Um, but you want to also be talking about if NSF was put together um, a new program like the margin source to sync, some new effort like that. When do modelers get involved? Do they get involved at the beginning uh, to maybe set the scene on uh, what the observational people, field people should be doing? Should they be part of it more in the middle or the end? You may want to talk about do modelers uh, help set the field sampling uh, agenda? Is the sampling regime different for the two communities? How are data sorted and composed to best be used either by the modeling input or model uh, validation efforts? You know, uh, what about model field data errors? Um, is there sufficient metadata? What is the role of laboratory experiments? What are the success stories? So. Do your best. This discussion will come and go so fast you won't even know you're in the room, but you've got a, just a short time to get your thoughts across. Everyone should talk. There will be one or two note takers rapidly taking your notes down and your comments down. We have, of course, uh, clinics um, every day and uh, posters today and tomorrow. Have a look at the posters. Pick your favorite one, vote on your favorite one. The most votes wins. There will be uh, prizes announced at the banquet. So um, don't be shy. What else? And there will be group discussions. Each of the groups will be uh, having a, their own group discussion and um, business meeting. And so feel free to attend all of those. OK. And so finally, um, so at this meeting, we normally have these posters and presentations that outline the latest and greatest in service dynamics modeling. We have modeling clinics. We have a whole bunch of them uh, well attended. They're big ones this year. From uh, the web modeling tool in Dakota, hydro data, open foam. I think that's focusing on the coastal uh, issues this year. The child landscape evolution. There's a coastal evolution model. There's the basic modeling inter interface, uh, integrated modeling, systems EKT, the education and knowledge transfer uh, clinic. There's a uh, land lab and um, COASI uh, data clinic. And finally, um, we're gonna we're here to have fun. This is our community, so let's do it. And uh, we're going to be uh, announcing a few. Um, people of merit. You know, it gives me uh, great pleasure to, uh, to provide an acknowledgement of uh, Bill Hogg, who's joined us. And, and 
for those of you who know Bill, Bill L, marvelous person, uh, he's won too many awards, uh, and yet here he is again receiving a acknowledgement from our community. But he has, of his many papers, uh, he's uh, has some citation classics, some of the most highly cited in the literature in the geosciences. He's won uh, numerous awards and his fellows and chairs and honorary doctorate degrees and even a few fossils named after him. His merit is for sustained push to get the sedimentology stratigraphy community to become more quantitative, better integrated and organized and to collectively speak with a clear voice in addressing the needs of the nation. This includes early recognition and support of systems in addressing these needs. And so you'll see this award uh, tomorrow at the banquet. And of course, we have our Lifetime Achievement Award, which means you have to have a life. And here we have uh, uh, Chris Paola, uh, the National Center for Earth Surface, Earth Surface Dynamics, the co-director of that. He will be winning the award. Another uh, award-winning scientist, many awards, the Lyle Medal, the Lawrence Loss Award, etc. Other awards for advising and instructing and all that wonderful stuff. And his citation is as a pioneer and world leader on the subject of quantitative dynamic stratigraphy and for the studies in basin filling and controls on physical stratigraphy rated streams, particle fractionation and depositional systems, bed form dynamics and self-organization and landscape evolution. So um, both worthy of these awards. So that's it from me. Before I turn it on to our next speaker, I'm willing to take a few questions on CSDMS right here and now live in front of the cameras that's broadcasting it to 25 million people around the world. <laughs> so any questions, comments? Oh, come on. No comment on my long hair, nothing? <laughs> okay. So uh, let me introduce the next speaker. Let me get his uh, slide up. Oops. Okay, so Chris Sherwood is uh, a most remarkable person. That's why he's decided to be chair of this uh, organization. We've had a number of uh, interagency meetings, but it was always to try to get the um, government groups to better work together and with the support of CSDMS. So it gives me great pleasure to introduce uh, Chris Sherwood as our new chair. <laughs> 